Hi, this is Kmod. This is the last installment of presentation relating to bank reconciliation for the paper which was written on the 10th of June 2016. I'm going to continue with the requirement 2.3 specifically relating to the preparation of uh, bank reconciliation. Quickly want to take you to the information. There you go. That's how it looks like. Uh, let's quickly go to the start of question 2. I've already tackled 2.1 in previous slide. I've already, previous presentation, I've tackled 2.2. Now we're specifically focusing on requirement 2.3, which relates to the preparation of a bank reconciliation on 30 April 2015. A bank reconciliation relates to ABC Fashion Wholesalers. We've been provided with a bank reconciliation for the previous uh, month. It's bank reconciliation on 31st of March 2015. That's essentially how the bank reconciliation looks like. In preparation of your bank reconciliation, I recommend that you follow the same format as for the last month's bank reconciliation. So this is a hint, so to speak, in a sense that our format of a bank reconciliation should look exactly the same as that bank reconciliation. So essentially what I'm saying is, in terms of descriptions, you're going to use the same descriptions, except that you'll have to update your amounts. Let's actually do the actual bank reconciliation. I'm going to start by that balance. I'm going to take, it says balances for the bank statement. I'm going to go to my actual Excel spreadsheet where we're going to illustrate the preparation of the bank reconciliation for April. The first item related to the balance is per the bank statement. There you go. Before I even talk about the actual amount, I just want to get to descriptions. I wrote the description as is. It could be a debit balance or it could be a credit balance. We're not going to take that amount specifically because remember we want uh, April's uh, balances for the bank statement of April. Moving along swiftly, the next item that I'm going to take in terms of descriptions is the deposit not yet credited at the bank. So I'm going to write exactly that description. Deposit not yet credited, not yet credited by the bank. At this point in time, I don't know what the amount of the deposit is, but remember that deposit will be reflected on the credit side. I'm not going to take that amount because that amount has already been uh, taken into account uh, so we'll have to go to the cash receipt journal to identify a deposit that has not yet been reflected moving along swiftly the next uh, description will be outstanding checks certainly we're going to have outstanding checks i'm going to write it there outstanding checks remember we make reverence of check numbers i'm not going to write any of those check numbers at this stage because i was still writing descriptions i think i've exhausted all descriptions at this stage because the, the next uh, cells might relate to outstanding checks so that's where i'm going to stop in terms of descriptions and i'm going to do the actual bank reconciliation i'm going to start with the first item i've already mentioned that it relates to the balance as for the bank statement Later on, I'm going to go to the bank statement and obtain the correct balance. I'm not going to take that balance. The deposit, as I've mentioned, I'm also going to refer to the cash receipt to identify the outstanding deposit. I firstly want to complete with amounts that are not highlighted on this bank reconciliation before I focus on other amounts. All those that are highlighted in green, I'm not going to take them into account. The only item that is not highlighted in green specifically relating to outstanding checks is check number A54 of 6,700. Before I even take it into account, I'm going to go to my additional information, exercise patience. Um, I'm not going to refer to those transactions that are highlighted in green because they've been taken into account. I'm going to go to number five. It doesn't relate to check number A54, so I'm going to skip it. That item has been taken into account. Number seven, it does not relate to the check. And the last transaction also does not relate to the check. It was important that you check just to make sure that uh, 
the check is not stale because if the check was stale we're not going to take it into account as an outstanding check for the current month's bank reconciliation however it looks like this amount is still outstanding therefore i'm going to take this check number it's check number check number a54 i'm going to take it there check number 854 it's an amount of 6700 remember that um, outstanding checks are debited on the bank reconciliation if you've forgotten if you provided with the bank reconciliation for last month use it as a hint to remember the treatment of items on your bank reconciliation we're going to debit as is debited but yes uh, the principle is outstanding checks are actually debited moving along swiftly that was the only check as per our bank reconciliation i'm going to quickly highlight that in yellow to indicate that we've taken into account that amount the next item i'm going to take into account is the balance as per the bank account i'm not going to take that figure because remember we have uh, prepared what we call a bank account in a general ledger and we need to go take that figure and post it to the bank reconciliation. Allow me to skip it at the moment. I'm going to go to the cash receipt journal. Cash receipt journal, I'm going to follow the same thought process. Every item that is highlighted in green, I'm not going to take into account. The only item that is not highlighted in green relates to a deposit of 36,200. Remember, a cash receipt journal will reflect your deposits. So certainly this deposit has not been taken into account in the current month's bank statement. Therefore, it has not gone through the bank. So we're going to declare this as an outstanding deposit. 36,200. Your deposits are credited and your checks are debited. If you have forgotten the treatment, please go to your previous Month's bank uh, reconciliation statement, you can clearly see that the deposits are credited. We did the same except that we took uh, the deposit as per the cash receipt for the month of April. That amount has been taken care of. I'm going to highlight that in yellow, nothing else. Remember, we're focusing only on the bank uh, column. I'm going to do the same, the same thought process applies. Uh, in regards to cash payments, I'm going to focus on the bank column, bank column, and I'm specifically going to look at those amounts that are not highlighted. Remember that document number in the cash payments journal refers to the check number. So we've got check number B21 that is not highlighted. We also have check number B24 not highlighted, check B26 not highlighted. All those checks will be reflected on the bank reconciliation statement as outstanding checks so the first check was b 21 uh, b 24 and b 26 b 26 check number b 26 there you go check number b 26 let's go quickly get amounts they're all debited uh, the first one 21 7500 please be patient 7500 there you go uh, b24 11200 there you go um, check b26 625 625 so we've taken into account all those outstanding checks for the month of april that's it. I'm going to quickly highlight them in yellow just to indicate that we've tackled those amounts. Please be patient. There you go. Done. We're done with the amounts relating to the cash payments channel. The next thing I'm going to tackle amounts that are reflected on the bank statement. The same thought process applies in the sense that I'm only going to focus on those amounts that are not highlighted. The first amount that is not highlighted relates to check number 634 uh, of amount of 15,740. 
I'm quickly going to go to additional information to get more details relating to that item. Remember, I'm not going to take into account those that are, are transactions that are highlighted in green because they've been taken into account. The first transaction that is not highlighted in green is transaction number five, and it relates to the credit entry on the 30th of April 2015 was in respect of a deposit uh, made directly into the account, but it appeared on the bank statement. So it's important uh, that you pay attention to finer details. ABC Traders relates to the other entity. Our business's name is ABC Wholesalers. We, we, uh, yeah, we share the first uh, uh, description uh, of the business, but we, we are ABC Wholesalers and not ABC uh, Traders. Just highlighted in pink. So essentially what happens, there was an error at the bank in the sense that they credited us with this amount erroneously. So we're going to fix it at the bank reconciliation by placing a debit. So it relates to a deposit on the 30th. Let's quickly go check that deposit on the 30th. There you go. They're actually referring to that amount. Is that deposit on the 30th? Uh, allow me to use that. So to fix it, we're going to go to the bank reconciliation and we're going to place it on the debit side of the bank reconciliation. So I'm going to say three, three, that's the amount. So we're going to say uh, debit amount incorrectly credited. You can basically use any description that you want, but as long as it's effective in communicating what actually happened. So I'm going to debit an amount that was incorrectly credited. So that's it. That's how the bank will fix it. Remember, it was on the credit side of the bank statement. Therefore, it will be taken to the debit side in fixing this error. Moving along swiftly, <clears throat> I'm going to go to that has been tackled. I'm going to go to transaction number seven. It relates to check number Six three four for fifteen thousand withdrawn by the head office. Please check this check was actually withdrawn by the head office, and, and it appeared on ABC's bank statement. So, the check erroneously debited uh, ABC's ABC wholesalers. Uh, however, or ABC. This check didn't actually relate to ABC, it related to the head office. So we're going to fix it by placing a credit of 15740 on the bank reconciliation. 15740, we're going to place a credit and we're going to say credit check. Debited in error. Debited by a bank in error. So please don't worry about descriptions. You can use any of the descriptions as long as they effectively communicate uh, the consequences of uh, the transaction. Moving along swiftly, that has been taken care of. The last transaction that we need to take care of in terms of additional information as check number B25 was erroneously debited twice. So it specifically relates to that check. It was debited twice. So we're going to take it to the credit side to fix the error. So it's an amount of 12,350. Let me go make sure. Yes, 12,350. Remember, I'm going to say credit. Um, Check credited twice, debited twice. It was debited twice, debited, debited twice. I think it's uh, the description, it's effective. We're crediting a check that was 
um, debited twice. Let me quickly get the check number if that will help users as well. Check number B25. So this was check number B25. Check number B25. There you go. I just quickly need to fix something that was check spelling incorrect. Um, it was check number. Let me get the check number for ease of reverence so that it's easy. I think it was check number 634. 634. There you go. I just want to open this a little. That should read uh, credit, maybe I'm just going to say CR for credit. I'm going to say CR for credit. Yes, because I wanted the full, I want you to read the full description. So I'm going to say credit check 64 debited by the bank and error. Is there anything else? Let's go back there. There's nothing else we've we'll tackled all amounts that appear on the bank statement. The next thing that we need to do is to take the balance as per the bank statement. Remember, this is a negative balance. It's an unfavorable balance. Therefore, it will be reflected as a debit balance. It's unfavorable. Therefore, it will be taken to the debit side of the bank reconciliation. So I'm going to take that amount. I'm going to take it to the debit side. Remember, if it's negative, it indicates that it's a debit. A debit, it's a, well, on the bank statement, is taken to the debit side of the bank reconciliation. I'm going to take it there. I just want to remove that negative. There you go. The last item that we need to take into account, I want to take you to the bank reconciliation. It relates to that item balance as per the bank account. I'm going to type it in balance as per the bank account. Remember, we already prepared the bank account. I'm quickly going to go to the bank account. We have a credit balance as per the bank account. So I'm going to take it to the credit side of the bank reconciliation. So it's, it's easy, it's, it's user friendly. It tells you that it was a credit balance. How, what's the treatment on the bank reconciliation? You just take it to the credit balance. So I'm, I'm going to say to stand there, I'm going to say equals to, I'm going to take that amount. There you go. Now, at the end of the day, your bank reconciliation should balance, meaning that the debit side must be equal to the credit side. If it doesn't, you need to go relook at uh, amounts that you've taken into account in preparation of the bank mm -hmm. reconciliation. So this is where my presentation stops. Uh, thank you. If you've got any questions, please post them to my cell number via WhatsApp or use my email address. Thank you.